every time you receive a new updated system, um, it's useful to first go to the Help menu option and then select the update notes. In this case, it is for 10.5 users. And you'll find a list of all the new features. Some of the new features are uh, very simple features. Some of them are quite involved. Um, in this particular video, we'll look at two simple new features and then look at something which is a bit more involved, which is called forecast combinations. Well, anyway, let's first of all go to this new feature. Summary tab in datasets view gives names of exposure, inflation, premium vectors, as well as associated triangle. Let's go to the link. So if you now open the data set, instead of just having two tabs, the triangle tab and the selected exposure, inflation, premium tab, you also have the summary tab, the triangle, the triangle type, the data type, is it associated with an exposure vector, an inflation vector, and so on. Well, let's try this new feature. So let me open, say, ABC, triangle group, then open this particular data set. And we can see we have the triangle tab, we have the selected exposure inflation premium tab, and now we have the summary tab which just lists uh, what kind of triangle it is, the type, the exposure, and so on. But that listing or that information you can also find uh, if you go to the data sets tab and you've got the associations here in the first line for that particular data set. Let's look at another new feature. Go back to help, update notes for 10.5 users. Um, the wizard can be run on multiple TGs. So let's go to the link. So now if you highlight a number of triangle groups, you can actually um, run the wizard on any incremental triangle in or any incremental data set in those triangle groups. And you can choose that option either from the um, menu bar, or you just use the right click of your mouse button to obtain the context sensitive menu. So if I highlight, say, all 1M, all 2M, and auto, then you can see the wizard button there, run wizard on selected TGs. But an alternative way is right mouse of your button, um, you come up with a shortcut context sensitive menu which is always very useful, run wizard. Uh, we're just going to run it on the paid losses in each one of these uh, triangle groups. Let's do that. And you'll see it's pretty fast. And then, of course, you can open if any of the triangles, a regression cannot be run because, say, an example, most of the numbers are zero, therefore you can't do a regression, you'll also get a message warning you to that effect. OK. So now let's open all 1M, and you'll see that for the paid losses, the models, uh, we didn't create any models for the case reserve estimates. We can always run the models. OK. Let's close that. The next feature we're going to look at is a new module in the system. Back to help. And we go to forecast combinations. So it's under MPTF. It only applies. This new module is only in MPTF. Forecast combinations enables forecasts for different data sets to be combined via linear factors to produce a weighted aggregate. OK, so let's do that. That's the link. Um, that's the dialog box where you can select various linear combinations. We're going to do it for one particular composite data set we have. So let's go back to the system. If we go to type of TG, we select composite. You'll find a composite called L1 and L2. Open that. Let's look at the triangle groups. This composite has two triangle groups. L1 and L2. 
What's the composite data set? Well, in the composite data set, for each triangle group, we actually have two triangles, deductible and ground up. And similarly, for L2, we have deductible and ground up. Let's go to models and run the model good. And we have a model for the deductible and the ground up L1 and also L2. Are there any correlations? Well, there are correlations there. Uh, it's obvious, it's kind of obvious there'll be a lot of uh, process correlation between ground up and deductible uh, and ground up and deductible here. And the other correlations between any segment in L2 and any segment in L1 are insignificant. So let's remove all insignificant correlations. Let's do that, just for fun. And it kind of makes sense that L1 deductible with L1 ground up uh, have high process correlation or here, estimate and close. And why don't we save that as say, if you like, let's save that good one. So model good didn't actually remove the insignificant correlations whereas a good one has removed the insignificant correlations. Now, let's, instead of forecasting to find the aggregate, we could do, well, we don't really want to find the aggregate because we don't want to add up the deductible to the ground up. What we'd like to do instead is create what's called a forecast combination. Let's do that. And let's highlight, for instance, um, all of them, all the data sets. Let's put a tick mark here, show details for CDS. OK, we've got to highlight them again. Let's create a forecast combination, which we could call, say, um, total uh, ground up minus D minus deductible. And I guess the multiplier here would have to be minus 1. The multiplier here would be minus 1. OK, so this will be the total of all the, the two ground ups minus the two deductibles. And it will be here as a linear combination. Well, we can calculate other linear combinations. So let's highlight deductible and ground up. And now create the difference of those two. So this is going to be, say, L1 uh, ground up minus deductible. And we'll do the similarity for line of business two. Um, create combination. A minus one a, and we'll call this total now L two um, ground up minus deductible. Okay, so we've got three forecast combinations. Now, if you change the order of these, let's change the order of these. Let's if we push this one down. Then when we want to calculate, we'll do, we want to do the PLD, predictive aggregate loss distributions, it will be only applied to L1. Whereas if we move the total ground up minus D to the top in the listing, then PLD will apply to that. So now we can save this particular three sets of linear combinations. And let's just call it, well, I've done this before. Let's call it total ground up minus D. I've done this before. And let's do a forecast. So now we have, in the forecasting table, we've got the total ground up minus deductible. Same thing for L1. Same thing for L2. And then we've got the forecast for every data set. If we go to the forecast summary now, We've got the total ground up minus deductible. We also have combination settings so that you know here what the multipliers are. 
Uh, similarly, if you go to L1, um, well, that's just L1 deductible. There aren't any multipliers. You also have forecast settings. What are the forecast scenarios going forward vis-a-vis -vis the past trends? Um, you've got the um, settings for L2, ground out minus deductible. These are the factors. Now, if you're doing PALD, it only applies to this particular linear combination. So let's do PALD, uh, reserve part. OK. So you've got the X and T total. You've got the VARs um, and T VARs just based on the sample, simulated values, quantile summaries, and so on. Of course, when you go back to the forecast dialog box, um, this button down here, forecast combination, we could go to periods and do the same thing for the next underwriting period, combined forecast table. We can check the future exposures, which is by default the last year's exposure, future premiums. Well, there weren't any, um, but by default it would be the premium of the last accident year. And we could save this, if you like, as T1 G U minus D combined. So this will work exactly the same as when you just find the standard aggregate. So now you've also got the combined table, which includes the next future underwriting year. You've got that for each linear combination. You've got a forecast summary that also includes the combined summary. You've got a summary for the just the future year. And of course, you've got a summary just for the reserve part. Um, and when you come to do PLD now, you could do the PLD for the combined, for the combined risk. Now, let's run the same model again and load model in new window, which is our good one model. And now we'll create the same combinations, but in a slightly different way. So here we'll go to forecast combination. Now let's select L1, two L1s, deductible and grad up, combined data sets. Now we're going to select combined data sets. So again, minus one. Oops, that's in the title. Put a minus one there. And let's make that. L1, oops, L1, ground up minus deductible, but this is going to be a combined data set. So it's going to be here in the listing. So the data sets we have now where we can create linear combinations and only combinations with weights is deductible, ground up, deductible, ground up, and this particular one. Let's create another one, another combined data set. And let's call that L2, ground up, minus D. That's another combined data set. OK. Um, all right, and now let's select these two data sets and create a forecast combination. Well, multipliers, if the multipliers are both 1, that will also represent total ground up minus deductible. OK, so now let's save that. Obviously, PILD will only apply to that particular combination. There's only one. So save that as, say, total uh, GU minus D number 2. And now let's look at the two forecast summaries. And they should be identical. So now we will find that these two are the same. No, they're not. OK, why aren't they not? Let me just check. I could have made a mistake somewhere. So the piece that I have made a mistake, because for L2, G, U minus D is, in fact, uh, I've actually added. So I'll have to go back to the forecast combination. I made a mistake. You might have noticed that. Um, forecast combination. I have to get rid of L2. Um, 
let's see if I can do it right now. L2, edit, edit combination data set. Let's change that to minus 1. Whoops. Okay, so it's worthwhile making a mistake because then you know how to rectify it. Save that now. It's total GU minus uh, D number 2. Yes. And okay, let's see what happens now. Now, hopefully, the answers will be the same. Well, that's the right multiplier. And now we go to summary data sets uh, by accident years, and we get the same answers. If we look at L1GU minus D there, L1GU minus D there, we should have the same answers. So that's just another way of doing it. L2GU minus D, L2GU. This could be quite useful if you've got one triangle which is gross of subrogations and recoveries, but it seems to have quite a few negative numbers. So instead, what you might want to do, negative value, so instead what you might want to do is look at, uh, sorry, uh, the net of subrogations and recoveries has got quite a few negative values. What you might do then is take the gross triangle and the subrogations and recoveries as a separate triangle, and then in uh, MPTF, you subtract the two, and some of the means might actually be negative. If you go back to the triangle group tab and you go to combinations, well, these are the combinations, forecast scenarios that you've actually saved. Uh, you know, still be aware then when you are forecasting various combinations, if we go back to the forecast dialog box, you've got all the options that you also have uh, when you do a standard forecast of the aggregate by just clicking on the forecast uh, button here. So you've got a, the same options in terms of periods, the same options in terms of units, future years, and the same options in terms of future parameters. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Um, you can always contact uh, support at insurer.com with any questions or any help in modeling and so on.